Hi, welcome to a uh, learn grow. <laughs> welcome to another learn grow invest video. I'm just here to do a quick market update as we usually do on a Friday evening. So today I'm going to be talking about Fesco. I'm going to be touching a little bit on Massey, a little bit about Wisinko, and I don't remember the other one just yet. So we'll get to that. If it's your first time here, I'm Jermaine. We are an investment community here that we just, you know, speak about investing, you know, whether it be real estate, stock market, cryptocurrency, personal finance, you know, all of the, all the things that you'd be interested in as an investor. So I definitely encourage you to subscribe. Uh, please like this video in advance because it's going to be a good one. And, you know, as usual, I invite everybody to join our Telegram group whenever they have the chance. All right. So let me just jump right into sharing my screen. So today we would have seen, and I'm going to, I'm going to go to, so um, this is the Jamaica Stock Exchange website. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to jump over to Moneyline to get a little bit more of the details that um, I want to show. So, um, I mean, if you haven't heard, Fesco would have reached an all time high today at $4.50. Now, the IPO was 80 cents, a little bit under a year ago, almost at a year now. So that's just amazing to see, right? So if, if you're holding from IPO, is is that better, Orville? Is that better? Let me know before I move on. Okay. Well, I'm I'm gonna assume that it's all fine and that you can hear me okay. Sorry about that. I don't I don't normally have those challenges, but um, yeah, so yeah, so I'm saying the IPO would have come out a little bit under a year ago. Um, okay, is anybody else having that issue, by the way? Let me know. I could just pretty much, um, can anyone else hear me? Okay, so Arvil, <laughs> please. Please check your speakers because everybody else is hearing me okay. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to edit this out the video. Anyway, it's fine. So it would have IPO'd at 80 cents. And, you know, today it would have hit an all-time high of $4.50. Now it ended the day at $4.14, but that's still quite, you know, quite, it, it, it's over 400% since, you know, IPO would have been, you know, released less than a year ago. So that's just amazing to see if if you don't know about Fesco, don't understand the company, we did a stock review on it. I'll share the link in, in the description after this video. Go and check that out. You know, I, I, I forgot to mention the, the disclaimer here, but everything I'm showing here is for education purposes only. This is not investment advice. Um, I mean, yeah, so just bear that in mind. So we're looking at the chart from from um, JSC here. So let's see. Let's let's look at a little bit more first. What's being shown here? So yeah. So it it kind of hovered. So after it, it 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 came on the market after IPO, I believe we saw it maybe go up a little bit to about a dollar twenty, dollar forty maybe, and then it found its way back down to a dollar. And, you know, I thought that would have been, you know, if you were interested, it would have been an excellent point to, to make a, a purchase. Um, but, you know, it's from there, we saw it go all the way up to $3.17. That was around August. I remember that very clearly. There were a lot of, you know, purchases, a lot of large volumes. If you can see here, you're seeing about 148 million in volume traded for that day alone. So that was, uh, that was one of the, the interesting days for it. We have not seen such volume since. I mean, the highest volume I'm seeing here since is 32 million and 57 million in April. So, you know, it, it kind of settled down for a while. You know, there would have been an, an opportunity there at, at $2.05. And then, you know, from there, it kind of traded between, you know, $3 and maybe about 2 250 there about right for the last couple of months 
then um, you know, over the last couple of days, we've just been seeing it climb. Today, all-time high of 450. Let's see what the buy orders look like. So as at this point, now this can change Monday, of course, but we have 174 buy orders. And we're seeing about you know 39 sell orders. Now, I imagine that um, we may see some more activity going into next week with the attention this is likely going to get over the weekend going into next week because likely going to have persons reporting on it you know going into next week persons may start to, to look and see if, if there are opportunities to either take their profits or add to their position depending on your focus and so you see the volume today was about 2.7 million and we saw 7.9 million on the 31st, 5 million. So you kind of saw the volumes going up a little bit um, from, from the start of January, building up there. So I don't know if it's it, it's likely in anticipation of the report. I believe it's due this month or later this month. I'll confirm that in our Telegram group. Or if somebody from our Telegram group can confirm it, uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what happened with fesco today let's see if there's any news that we need to be made aware of so trading in shares director sold 2.5 million units that's on january 19th uh, before that party sold 30 million um, that's on december 31st and and these 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 activities are normal, right? Um, it's it's going to be announced because it's directors or connected parties. That's normal here. And I mean, I always think about, you know, who is buying, who is selling. I, I love to see directors buying. So for example, November 20, 22nd, director purchased a half a million units. Those are the things I like to see, but it's also natural to see directors selling at some point you need to cash out right or maybe you need capital to do other things and on december 31st they would have updated their 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 dividend policy i'm curious to see what they say about this i believe their prospect has mentioned a 25 percent of net profit dividend payout i don't know if i'm mixing that up with spur tree <laughs> So I'll, I'll go and verify that as well. But that's uh, that's what I believe they would have said. It's in the in the prospectus. And we saw here on November 18th, uh, director purchased nine, 900,000 shares. So directors purchasing is a, is, is a good thing for me. I'd like to see that. But director selling is also normal. Depending on the volume, you may, you may, you may be able to to match it to see if it's a top 10 you know shareholder or not um you know those moves might sometimes be interesting to see let's see if they have any i don't believe their financials are outed yet so so we're waiting on the third quarter ending uh december that's what we're waiting on now so it is due this month if i'm not mistaken so we would have i think i think this was the one that would have done the stock review on so we don't need to go through it right now. So we're all in, in anticipation for, for the new one. I think that's why you'd have been seeing that price movement because persons are anticipating good report. They would have had a new location open. And so I think investors are anticipating to see that you know, reflected on, on the, the latest quarterly financials. So you know, if you don't know about Fesco, check out that stock review video that I mentioned. We go in depth to explain the company and so on. So let us talk about Massey, right? So let's look at Massey because we did a video on Massey last week. And, you know, a week ago, <laughs> there were at 3,200 because they would have cross listed. And I believe today it went as low as 2,000. Now, the interesting thing is, right, and this is one of the things we were wondering, is how the market would respond. Now, we know traditionally the market doesn't seem to favor high-priced stocks. Now, this is not a sentiment shared by everybody. There's only some persons feel this way. Uh, you know, there, there's a school of thought that says, you know, focus on the valuation of the company, not the price of the company. 
some, I believe, you know, maybe the inexperienced investors would say, well, it, this is a higher price. It, it's expensive for me. Really, really unclear. There's no way to know for sure. But what we're seeing is that the price would have gone from, you know, 3000 200 last Friday. So, you know, trending down this week. So, um, you know, it would have gone down. I think that's a, like a 33% decline. So what, what I'm anticipating is that you may see, I don't think you'll see the same drop that you would have seen last week, but I think, so with the stock split being about four to five weeks away, I think in another week or two, things will remain fairly the same. And then closer to the stock split, you may see more activities as, as persons try to get their positions before the stock split. Now, if you don't know what a stock split is, a, a stock split is when a company de decides to multiply its shares. So if it is that you have 100 shares and there's a 10 to 1 stock split, you multiply 10 by the number of shares outstanding, and then you have 1,000 shares. So Massey is doing a 20 to 1 stock split. That means all existing shareholders will see their shares, their number of shares increase by 20. Now, it will be a lower price at that point, but essentially the value of your portfolio will not change. Now, what historically in our market, what has happened is after stock splits, there is typically a run up for that stock. Um, and again, that, that may you know, point to just the psychology of the market thinking, okay, it's a lower price. I can get more. There's more activity. And usually you look to do a stock split to, to enable larger trading volumes. Right, because we, we're, we're seeing just 8,000 units would have traded today. That's not a lot of units. But now if, if that is split by 20, you may see just more, more activity, more, more liquidity for the stock overall. So that's what you can anticipate, I think, in a couple of weeks. So this is one we're going to be watching closely over the next few weeks. I likely touch on it every single week until the week after the stock split because I'm anticipating that We'll see the price, you know, I don't think you're going to see a steeper decline, but you may see just, just kind of, you know, small, maybe declines. And then as, as I say, closer to when, you know, persons are ready or, or, or anticipating the split. So I don't know if the date of the split has been confirmed. I think it's sometime in March. So it's a couple of weeks away. So I would say, if you're interested in this company, speak to your licensed financial advisor, which I am not, and you know, make an informed decision on it. So let's look at what the buy queue is saying. So there's, let's see if I can, um, unfortunately I can't zoom just yet, um, or can I? Let me try. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So we're seeing, uh, 49 orders in terms of volume, 5, 10, 15. So that's maybe what, 50,000 units? So 50,000 units by 2,000, maybe $10 million worth of, of orders. And I mean, you're not really seeing, so, so, so this is a part of the issue, right? These, these, these problem, these, these, these quantities are considered small overall. So once you have that stock split, you're gonna see larger quantities being traded and you likely see more orders being traded as well. So that's what you can anticipate with that. Let's see if there's any news that we need to know. All right, so I mentioned that today would have closed at $2,019. Um, so highest price we've seen is $3,200. Lowest price we've seen is $2,000. That may be day to day. And it's only 98 million units outstanding right now. This is going to be multiplied by 20. So this number of shares outstanding is going to change in, in, in a couple of weeks. All right. All right. So latest news. Um, well, we would have covered these already. So not much to share here. 
let me see i don't think we're gonna have anything right now so that's to give that a couple of months these documents though are on the trinidad and and tobago stock exchange so we had linked those under the the massey is cross-listing video so check that out you'll see the documents there the financial statements overview of the company etc Barita also had a site where they did an overview of, of everything relating to Massey. Check that out if you want to learn more about them. So that, that is my um, anticipation. Are those, those are the things I'm looking forward to seeing, just how it moves for the next week or two, because I think because there's so much activity in other areas of the market, which one of the stocks that I wanted to look at as well is Fontana, um, which has just just look at that, <laughs> right? So for a long time, and I, I actually like looking at it on money line. I don't know why. Just looks more colorful. All right. So the high today for Fontana is twelve forty nine, right? So how far back can I go? So this is from February last year, six dollars. So a year ago, it's six. If you if if you held this for a year, you'd be one hundred percent up right now. So this last quarter that we are we're, we're coming out of is known to be their best quarter traditionally. Um, so I mean, I think what we're seeing here is that anticipation. Um, of of that report being favorable we also we, we also know that they're expecting to launch a new uh, a new location we did that in the stock review video so we covered that there so let us see what the trades were like today this is just showing the the volume that that was was trading earlier today we said the overall volume was 400,000 units so I mean, it's it's. I, I think that. How can I find out when that report is due? I believe that the report for Fontana is due by the end of the month as well. All right. So I think we'll know whether or not this run up is justified very soon. So as say persons, you know, celebrating on social media about it. I think what should have been interesting to see, right? So so this is why. You want to just for the stocks that are on your short list do a check-in at least maybe every couple of weeks to see what's happening because if you notice this volume on the 10th of january 13 million no other large volume here for an entire year you see 13 million here on january 10th that 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 would have been you know something that would have caused me to take a second look had i seen it <laughs> Right, so I mean, 13 million, and then a few days later, right, we, we have you know what we saw here today. So um, this is 1249 is all time high in the last year or last 52 weeks. It's been as low as five dollars fifty, 1.2 billion shares outstanding. So you know, year to date, 60 percent. That's that's for 2022. Um, you know, quarter to date, month to date, you know, etc. Um, so we are anticipating, have they announced a dividend? They, they announced their last dividend in November. Uh, so they seem to do two announcements per year. We'd have to kind of see more data to verify that. Um, let's go to the news specifically. Oh, Evan, that, that's interesting. Um, I don't think Transjam flopped, you know. I think it's it's more the timing for Transjam. And I, I, I'd I actually, my thoughts on that is that you may want to give that company a look if you're interested in dividends. And I think with more things going back to normal, right? So, so what we're seeing for a lot of companies that are having amazing run-ups right now, they would have not had a great 2020 and they're recovering or they're positioning themselves, right? Look at look at Wisinko. A lot of persons were sleeping on, on Wisinko for almost a year. But look at it this week, right? So I don't, I wouldn't say 
say Transjam was a flop, I think it's timing, which nobody would have planned for, for a pandemic. So with the lockdowns, with all of those, you know, no, no movement days, I think that is more the impact for Transjam than anything else. But with more, you know, normalcy coming, I think we're going to say something. I think we're going to say something for Transjam, for Transjam this year. I'm not saying, you know, a major significant movement, but it's been hovering around the, the, the one dollar twenty mark for a little while, so um, that is one I'd actually be be interested in 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 doing a review for. So I probably add that to the the uh, stock review list. All right. Um, Dwayne, is that the case though? Because the, the IPO was one forty one. They would have paid dividends how many times now? Two or three times. It depends, depending on the volume you have, or I guess the volume wouldn't even matter here. The loss that you would have had, and, and that would be an interesting calculation, actually. So let, let me just go through Fontana, and then I'll, I'll look at Transjam as the last stock for today, because this is meant to be a short video. So um, is there anything interesting? Connected parties sold. So that might have been, is, is that what we would have seen for Fontana? Yes, that's probably it, right? So 13 million units there. So that would have accounted for the volume for that day. Is, is, that, is, that, is that how I'm to read that? Okay, Andrew, so tell us how much was the dividend? And then we'll, we'll try to do some, some math on it. But, um, yeah, so let's, yeah, I, I like when these, these things are quantified, right? Okay, all right, so I think that's it for, for Fontana. We're waiting on their next report. As I said, that's due this month. Let us look at Transjam. So that'd be the last stock for today. I wanted to talk about Wisinko, but we don't have enough time. We'll talk about Wisinko next week, all right? So let's look at Transjam here. Because I think that dividend would have, you know, kind of one year. So 54 week rate has been as low as 94 cents. That's interesting. I must have missed that. Um, so it's been as low as 94 cents which if you bought at 94 cents, you'd be up right now. But this this must have been at a very, very early point, right? So let's see. But mostly we know it to trade within the same, it, I don't think it's been, so in November it went as high as 132. Mostly we see it in, in the 120 to 125 range, right? And if it is that you you had average down maybe so you bought at 141 but equal number of units at 120 i believe your average price would be somewhere about 130 you'd have you'd have more units which would help you in terms of the dividend payment as well so that dividend was 38 cents so let me let me do some some math here I'm gonna do math live, guys. Um, so, so let's say you bought ten thousand units, right? You bought ten thousand units at one forty-one. I'm gonna zoom into this, by the way. Why am I doing math live? I feel like this is gonna be a setup for me. Um, e five times d five, right? So the current price, let's let's say it stays at at one twenty one, right? So you're down. What's what's that percentage there? Um, let's do the math on that as well. Um, so let's calculate the dividend first. Three eight four. So 
It have gotten okay. So 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 let's just talk. Um, let's just talk monetary value, right? Okay. So there so there so there were two dividends, Andrew. Those those two are for well. Let's let's use the data to verify, right? Let's look at corporate actions. Okay. All right, so so I'll I'll combine the two because we're doing the math as if we're we're we're, we're holding from the 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 IPO point, right? So we're gonna say it's equal point seven four eight plus is that is that it? So, so if you add this to this, you'd have gotten thirteen thousand seven hundred. So your loss there would have been four hundred dollars, or or at like, I, I think about what less than ten percent, maybe five percent there about. I don't think that's that, that's a major thing considering the pandemic, right? Now I'm not a Trans Jamaica holder. I just thought that statement from from Evan was was not not necessarily a fair statement to make, right? Uh, did I catch that right? Yeah. So Norman, we have not covered CPJ yet. Hopefully, we'll be able to cover it soon. Uh, so we we we're going to be doing two two stock reviews per month. So I have Fast Rich coming up next Wednesday, and hopefully, we'll be able to cover CPJ. I know I know it's gotten a lot of interest. All I'll say is that um, I think there's more there there are more interesting things in store for that company. Um, we saw a, a brief correction this week, but I think it was brief. It wasn't. I think it. Um, I think I think it's it's definitely going to be a company that we want to review. Let me say it that way. All right. So that was it, guys. Um, I just want. I, I, I just wanted to do this quick update to just kind of you know talk on some of the things that I saw this week. Uh, it's it's earning season, right? So a lot of reports are coming out. If you're interested in companies, don't just sit on 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 the sideline. Speak to a financial advisor. Do the research. We have tons of videos on the channel to help you this to to do stock research. So just look for that playlist will show you how to go through the, the financial statements, how to do research on companies and how to make a decision as to whether or not that stock is worth buying or not. But if you, this is the extremely, right, th things are looking very favorable for, for investing right now. Let me just say it that way. And not just thinking short term, you want to invest consistently. You want to do research. You want to be patient. Because you know most of what I would have shown you here today, you you'd have had to, for example, be patient with Fontana for a year. You'd have had to be patient with Fesco, even though I think Fesco has done extremely well. So if you're holding from IPO, four hundred percent is extremely good for one year. And so I mean, do the research, invest consistently. Where you need help, speak to an advisor. Persons do recommendations in the group all the time. I haven't even spoken about Spur Tree, right? So there's a lot of things that we can talk about. So maybe I'll do one of these short videos again next week to kind of you know talk about some of the things that are happening on the market. But yeah, Spur Tree, Fontana, Wisinko, um, I think CPJ, those are the stocks that persons are talking about in the Telegram almost every day. So feel free to join us there as well. Uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. Before I go, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel, like this video. It really helps us. Join us on Telegram. Register for our upcoming class. It's on March 5th. We're going to talk to you about how to analyze companies, etc. And finally, before you go, I want to remind you about Deuteronomy 8.18, which says, Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. I hope everyone stays safe. I'll see you tomorrow morning. We have a video re being released with Brian Frawley talking about why the stock market goes up. It's going to be a great video. I'll also see you for the session that we have tomorrow at 6 with Charlene to talk about setting financial goals. All right. So 
Take care, everyone.